The Winnipeg Jets obviously haven't even kicked off preseason yet, but you know what? Instead of talking about the upcoming season, which should be a pretty fun one for the Jets, let's look two years into the future where Winnipeg's vision and, quite frankly, their roster situation gets a lot more interesting. We'll dive into how the Jets might navigate a very, very interesting 2026 to 2027 season on tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets. You're locked on the Hockey Jets, your daily podcast on the Winnipeg Jets. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Good evening, friends, and welcome to this episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Harrison Lee, an avid Winnipeg Jets fan and an online blogger. You can follow me on Twitter at HLLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. As always, thanks for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on all of your favorite podcasting platforms and YouTube. Doing so is always free of charge and ensures you never miss another episode. But more than anything, we love and appreciate your support. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of a locked on. Make every moment more and visit FanDuel.com. New customers can get uh, can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed. All you have to do is visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Now, like I said at the top of the episode, I want to talk about the Jets in two years. Uh, I said 26-27. It's actually going to hit even earlier, 25-26. That season, take a guess at how much of a, of the roster cap allocations the Jets currently have in cash. I'll give you one second to think about it, because I guarantee you're not going to get it. I, it. I saw it, and I was actually pretty shocked. Do you know how much it is? They have around $19,236,000 or so allocated as it is right now, with six players under contract. That's for the 2025-26 season. Do you know how scary that is to consider when you think about, you know, the, the longevity of the NHL and how this team is constructed? Winnipeg is two years away from basically having almost no one under contract. And look, on the one hand, that is a little bit scary. On the other hand, it, it could be a really good opportunity for the Jets to hit the reset button, right? Re-examine its priorities, think about roster construction from the ground up, and start over. Now, you know, looking at this team and, and sort of where it is and where it should go in the future, I think the Jets have some unusual questions to answer because the Jets have some unique challenges uh, to, to, to consider compared to a lot of other teams. You know, when you look at Winnipeg's cap allocations, right, interestingly for this season, uh, I was taking a look at the breakdown in comparison to the rest of the league, and the Jets actually spend among the least in wages for forwards, right? Uh, their cap allocation comes down to around, I would say, uh, it's like 42, 43 million, um, which is, is 25th in the NHL. That's pretty low, relatively speaking. But they spend uh, in the top 15 for defensemen and certainly in, in uh, goaltenders, right? But obviously, like, it's not like top 10 or anything. You know, they're 12th in defender spending, 11th in goaltending. So it's it's up there, but it's not like crazy in terms of the total cash and allocations that they've got. But the fact that the Jets don't spend as much on forwards kind of tells you that Winnipeg's, you know, uh, you know, power up front over the past few years maybe hasn't been I would say as pronounced as other teams. And you kind of notice it when the Jets occasionally struggle to score. Last year I would say uh Winnipeg definitely lacked some high-end finishing and finesse. It's just the reality of the situation and part of it is because the Jets haven't had as many prospects graduating to this level and you know the departure of guys like wheeler whether we want to admit it or not you know certainly impacts the jets ability to score now wheeler uh, unfortunately kind of got towards the end of his career and was a little bit slow to the point where it was kind of hindering um the the things that he did really well but then you look at some of the other departures guys like patrick line who was a natural finisher dubois who was uh, a very good scorer in his own right and so look the reality is the jets did bleed some talent now, I'll say for this particular season, despite having a cheaper payroll when it comes to the forwards, that's partially because the Jets have a few guys who elected to take bridges. 
But those players that the Jets did acquire, I think are going to do really well. I'm very excited for Velarde. I think that he has, um, for me, a lot of scoring potential. I think the concern that I have with Velarde is that he's part of this two-year window, right? Um, you look at the 2025-26 season, and suddenly there's a lot of questions about who's going to be sticking around. And as much as I really want to believe that Velarde would stay, we don't really have any sort of guarantee that that's going to happen. Now, the good news is, is in 25-26, he's going to be an RFA. So worst case scenario, you can kind of re- like... Um, you can kind of revisit this conversation about whether you want to extend him uh, or whether he wants to depart and perhaps trade his rights. He'll still be at the age where he's still an RFA. I think that's very convenient for the Jets. I think it fits um, kind of how the Jets have been operating recently. You don't see Winnipeg signing as many long-term deals. Uh, I feel like everyone's sort of waiting for the cap to go up before they really commit. And if you ask me right, if you look at this team, It really feels like the Jets are at a weird transition point. We haven't seen them do this all that often, but it kind of feels like Winnipeg is waiting for a major development of some sort. Uh, And and players accordingly have sort of also reacted towards uh, the news that the cap is going to go up in the next couple of seasons. And I think a lot of people are trying to gamble and and sort of bet on themselves and, and wait for that big money deal because they know that if the cap goes up, they're uh, wage ability also goes up, right? Their their ability to get a bigger earning share. Now, I think for Winnipeg, that does ask, you know, a lot of questions because we know the Jets might be on a bit of an internal budget right now. So maybe the cap increase doesn't help the Jets as much as you'd hope. But in the meantime, obviously, we've got two years where the Jets can be fun. But after that, for me, the, the situation and the picture of the team becomes increasingly complicated. And in just a little bit, I kind of want to talk about which players are, are going to be up for renewal and whether they should bring them back or not. But before we go any further, I did want to shout out our friends and partners that I mentioned earlier at FanDuel. Get ready for the NFL season with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get 200 back in bonus bets, guaranteed. All customers who bet $5 will also get $100 off of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. For those of you who are out-of-market streamers, this is a great deal. Obviously, you know that streaming sports can be pretty expensive, so $100 off with a simple $5 bet, you really can't go wrong. Now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use, and you can bet on everything from spreads to player props and so much more. Obviously, as a Ravens fan, um, I'm not really big into betting, but if I were to be, I would certainly be putting some money on the, uh, the Ravens to run the AFC North this year. Maybe you're a Vikings fan from just across the border. Obviously, We know that the Vikings have had some lean years over the past few years, uh, some heartbreaks, some upsets. Maybe this is the year that you feel confident in casting a bet on their ability to not only make the playoffs, but actually put on a good performance. I did say that with a straight face, but hey, maybe it happens for real. No matter what, though, you can visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and kick off the NFL season with an offer you don't want to miss. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Every day, thank you so much for rejoining rejoining us on tonight's episode as we're talking about Winnipeg two years down the road. I know the season hasn't even kicked off yet. You're probably like, why the heck is he talking two years into the future when we haven't even gotten to preseason of this season? Well, to be honest, I think the real reason is that the Jets have a very uncertain picture. We kind of know what the season's going to be. I think we've talked about it enough. We know that this season's probably going to be pretty fun. Two years down the road, though, the question becomes very open-ended. The Jets obviously have a lot of players who are on expiring deals over the next couple of seasons. Now, I think it's really complicated to say um, who's going to come back and who's going to stay. I think in part because we we need to know how players are, are feeling. So let's start off with the first guy that I think is really worth talking about um in in terms of you know his impact on the team and honestly getting a feel for his personal mood that's Nikolai Ehlers I've talked about Ehlers as being Winnipeg's perhaps most important attacker one of their most important skaters all that kind of stuff and I think with the Jets right uh this is a complicated contract because Ehlers has missed a a chunk of time over his career Uh, but the thing with him is that when it comes to transition the ability to create, 
all of the offensive tools and things that he brings, his ability to promote play from the perimeter or down low, uh, the, the skill that he has on the power play at even strength, all of that makes him a super dangerous, dangerous player. And I, I think for him, the thing that has always kind of followed him, right, is, is this weird perception that maybe he's not really a first liner. But I think if you actually watch him, you know that he is. The dude is super dynamic. He's one of the most creative players the Jets have ever drafted. And when it comes to a lot of the uh, hard work and industry that's required to get the puck up the ice, Ehlers is an expert at it. The question is, does he really feel like he's being valued the way that he should? And I don't know how he feels because when you look at his time on ice, it's always lower than a lot of the guys who play on the first line. I know Bones shifted him the same number of times or whatever, but at the end of the day, right, we all know that historically he doesn't get power play one time. We know that historically he doesn't actually get um, enough shifts that he should be used for. Uh, it was a big problem under Maurice. Bones, I, I don't understand um, if it's just uh, Ehlers getting off the ice faster or if, if it's kind of a thing where Shifley and, and Wheeler and some of the other guys just hung out there more. Whatever the situation is, if he's not getting the same amount of ice time, then just find a way to shift him in more frequently. If he has to have more shifts technically on paper, who cares? Just get the guy more ice time. He's your most creative player. He's one of the most, uh, most dangerous attackers in the league. And for the Jets, if he's playing like 16 minutes a night, that's not enough. The guy has to be out there as many shifts as he can physically stand. The dude is so changed, like game-changing, but... At 25, 26, right, that season he's going to be, what, you know, late 20s, uh, probably looking for a big raise. And I'm starting to wonder if he's going to leave in free agency. He's got a modified no-trade clause over the next couple of seasons, but, you know, Ehlers, I've always wondered if he really does stay here uh, through the duration of his deal, just because I feel like personally he probably hasn't always been happy with the front office. You don't hear a lot from him that he's not happy, but it's hard to know what he's thinking. It's hard for me to really get a sense that he's also pleased with the direction of the team. He spent a lot of time here kind of watching the team sort of dawdle. Shifley, I think, has made it very clear how he feels. With Ehlers, we don't really have as much of a window, but you get a sense that there's something under the surface to where he's maybe not as pleased. So um, that's a contract that I think is going to have a lot of complicated uh, questions. And if Ehlers isn't a Jet uh, through the 2024-25 season in its entirety, I wouldn't be shocked. I got to be honest, I would not be shocked. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. We'll have to keep an, you know, a barometer out for how Ehlers feels. I'd love for him to come back, but I have to be honest, uh, the more I think about it, the more I do wonder about his long-term future. Another guy that I kind of wonder about um, is obviously you know Morgan Barron. I do think Barron is going to come back. I feel like he's got a good place here. I think he's probably pretty fond of playing for the Jets. I think the Jets are certainly fond of him, um, and, and certainly he's got a good role. I think he has a chance to really grow in his role for the Jets. So when it comes to Barron, I'm not as worried. I do think he's got a, a good opportunity to seize a more important role with the team. Um, but one of the other recent arrivals that I do have a huge question mark around is Gabe Velarde. You know, regardless of the current interviews and stuff, I do wonder if Velarde is, you know, one of those players who kind of gets the Dubois situation where he didn't really get a choice of where he got traded to, and he doesn't really see himself being a Jet long-term. He hasn't given any indication of that yet, and we don't even know what he's like for the Jets because he hasn't even laced up. So for me, those questions we can probably table for a while, and like I said, he is an RFA, so um, Winnipeg, I think, has some options with him. I'm hoping that the next couple of seasons are really productive. I know it does mean that he's going to have a big money extension at the end of it, but look, at some point you're going to have to pay it for quality. And if you pay a guy like Velarde a pretty good sum after he has a big couple of seasons for you, who cares? That's great. You should want to pay your stars and keep them locked up, right? You don't want to have guys who aren't really performing, who aren't really living up to expectations. And I have a lot of confidence in Velarde's ability to not only ace the exam, but also become a fan favorite and maybe even want to stick around in Winnipeg. It'd be nice to have Gabe. I've always been a fan of him ever since he was a prospect. Uh, I was really upset that a lot of his career was kind of derailed initially, it seemed, by injuries. But I'm so glad that, you know, 
even at, you know, a couple of seasons in, he's finally, you know, uh, getting his feet on the ground. He looks like a really good player. And I think he can become a core piece of Winnipeg's future if everything goes right. So let's hope that in 25, 26, we're talking about a big extension for a long time and not a guy getting traded again. I think I'm tired of trades uh, of, of star young players. It'd be nice if we could finally retain some talent, but let me know how you feel about a couple of these core players. I think on our next episode, we'll probably explore, uh, you know, more of the contracts that are expiring and talk about who should stay and who should go. But in just a little bit, I kind of want to talk about the next ones, right? The next players who could step up for the Jets and become really core critical components. We'll dive into all of that in just a moment. Hello, friends, and welcome back to these closing thoughts of tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Every day, thank you so much for joining us on tonight's episode as we close out with some thoughts on the next ones for the Jets. Uh, obviously, we've talked about a lot of prospects over the years, um, and Winnipeg, I think, you know, for, for talking about two years on, right, the Jets have, I would say, an interesting core that's starting to take shape. Uh, while we don't know what a lot of these guys are going to be like on the ice for Winnipeg, because, you know, most of these players haven't exactly been tested at the NHL level yet. I'll say this, right? When it comes to the marketing and like PR and, and personalities and leadership traits and stuff, that stuff, I think Winnipeg is already secured in the bag. There's really no question that in terms of character, in terms of the natural chemistry that's formed so far, the next crop of jets look to be pretty good. I, I feel like, in terms of the personality and and backgrounds and chemistry, I have pretty good faith that that's all going to pan out. Where I do have questions kind of comes down to how many of them are actually going to become mainstay NHLers. For me, I think Lambert, McGrory, and um, oh gosh, I'm suddenly blanking. Uh, Barlow, I, I do think they're all going to play a role, but I, I kind of wonder, you know, where they fit in the uh, actual lineup because. McGrory, while he's a very good attacker, might always be held back a little bit by his skating. I guess the main thing you think of is, you know, is it enough to really hinder his ability to play in the top six? That I'm, I'm kind of feeling like, no, I think he's actually going to be pretty good. I think that he's worked super hard to get where he is, and I think he has the ability to really blossom and grow for this team. He's certainly really turning it on in college. I think we've seen him scoring at such prolific rates and certainly for Team USA recently that you have to be excited about his future. Um, he, he might actually be Winnipeg's best overall prospect. I think there's a pretty fair argument that the growth that he's shown, including you know his skating stride, really taking huge steps forward, all of that for me makes me think he's he's on the right path to becoming a really good player for the Jets. Um, maybe somebody who is kind of flying under the radar a bit just because you know, he's always had some of the stuff in terms of like the, the personality being uh, the first thing that people talk about. But the, the actual skill that he has and his ability to score down low, I feel is actually surprisingly underrated. Um, Barlow, you know, he's very pro ready already. He's got the build. He's got the skill. Uh, I, I, I do wonder if he maybe wants to add a little bit more finesse to his game. I think that's something that, you know, would probably help him uh, add a little more deception just because, you know, guys who have monster shots are used to sort of scoring with abandon at lower levels. You start graduating up, though, and obviously the, the higher levels you go, you encounter better defenders, better cold tenders, and guys who are going to be harder to beat in one-on-one -on -one matchups. So I think Barlow uh, is going to be an NHLer, uh, probably an impact one, but, you know, he might be more of like a second or third liner, which is still very good. Make no mistake. If he becomes a guy who's like a 20 to 25 goal scorer, that's awesome. Uh, you just have to kind of measure expectations that maybe he doesn't become the 35 or 40 goal scorer that his release might indicate. Lambert, I guess, has the most potential to be, uh, you know, the, the classic boom and bust case, right? A guy with effortless skating, offensive ability for, for miles, but whether he puts it all together at the next level is still kind of up in the air. I have faith in him. I still think he's got the ability to reach that level. It's just, you know actually doing it that could be um, not necessarily a challenge, but something that he'll want to uh, continue to work on. Internally, I'm still keeping an eye on Gustafson. I, I do think that he has the ability to become a really good middle six player for the Jets. I, I don't know if it's ever going to happen, but I still feel like in terms of a guy who's a really smart center who could probably thrive with skill and back up your top two centers, 
he's a guy that you really should pencil in and keep a close watch on because when he was, you know, with the Moose, he had some pretty surprisingly good scoring rates. We know he's defensively responsible and hardworking. It's just a question of him earning a role that's more prominent. Perfetti, I really have no questions about. I think he's going to be a superstar for the Jets. I guess the question is, can his health hold up? He really hasn't missed a lot of time in terms of um, like the number of injuries he's had, but the injuries he did have sidelined him for like half a season. So I guess in that sense, yes, he did miss a lot, but uh, you know, it's his first couple of seasons. He's very rugged, you know, for the amount of times that he gets like decked and and checked and stuff. But I, I feel as long as he can, you know, put together most of a season this year, um, I'm excited for him to really take the mantle of this offense and maybe even graduate into the Shifley role in the future. A lot of eyes on him. I'm a huge fan uh, and somebody who I've, I've really circled on my my future core as a guy that I think could become one of the greatest Jets uh, of this current group. Now, one last player that I want to talk about for a moment is a guy who came over in the, the Dubois trade, and that's Rasmus Kupari. Now, Kupari has never really shown like super high-end dynamism, but I, I just feel like there's more skill and something there that the Jets can maybe build around. I don't know if Kupari will ever be more than a bottom six player. It's you know possible that he's kind of past that point, but I, I don't want to give up on him yet. He hasn't laced up for the Jets. We don't know how Bones is going to use them or any future coach. I'm keeping a close eye on him. He might become a really good utility player for the Jets and maybe even you know somebody who one day takes on a bigger role, kind of like Barron has done recently. I, I don't know if the scoring is going to follow, but let's keep an eye on him. He might be a really cool contributor and somebody to be excited about longer term. Uh, obviously, over the next couple of days, we'll, we'll keep an eye on the Jets. I think it's been pretty quiet on, uh, quiet on their end. So I'm going to do some more projection stuff and talk about Winnipeg of the future. But for tonight's episode, that is going to be all the time that we have. Obviously, we've got plenty more to talk about with not only the forwards, but the defense as well. So stay tuned for that. But like I said, that's all the time that we have tonight. Thanks so much for making Lockdown Jets your first listen of the day. As always, have a great night and go Jets go.